So, okay, Sabria, <clears throat> just about these alphabets. How how did you come to how did you come to make it? What what was it? What what made you do this? And why this way? Mm, I wanted to study uh, Tibetology, mm -hmm. or Central Asian sciences, and mm -hmm. um, with Central Asian sciences you study Tibetology and and Mongolistic, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, because there was no blind person or visually impaired person before mm -hmm. uh, who had studied this, uh, I had to create, uh, create my own methods and techniques mm -hmm. in order to be able to study along with the other sighted students. Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, I uh, discovered um, that there was a machine, a camera, mm -hmm. with which I could read actually the Tibetan script. Mm -hmm. and this camera, I push over a piece of paper mm -hmm. and then all the black print, everything which is black on white, is going to be transferred into impulses mm -hmm. and projected on the um, index finger of the of the left hand. Mm -hmm. So with this camera, I actually could read all kinds of scripts, mm -hmm. not only Latin letters, but also Tibetan letters and and um, Sanskrit and Mongolian mm -hmm. letters. And Amazing. Mm -hmm. So, but. Um, the problem was that it was very, very noisy. So they threw me out of the library, and they said they told me I'm not. At, uh, we are not at the dentist. Mm. So um, actually, they they really um, they yeah they they were a little bit cruel, but mm. I could understand that yeah, yeah. because it it was very noisy and loud, mm -hmm. and also it was very very exhausting because mm. after three hours reading, mm -hmm. and my my finger got numb. Mm. So uh, and I couldn't read along with the other sighted students in the in the school so mm -hmm. um, or in the classes. So I had always to learn all the text by heart, mm -hmm. and then I had to remember in class. I had to remember by heart mm -hmm. what I had read, and then I could translate. So oh, that yeah. was very very difficult. Mm -hmm. So therefore, actually, um, but this was uh, um, already in the first or second semester. Mm -hmm. I decided to create something which is more of a use for me and which I can use very much faster. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so what I did was I created a braille system which is on one hand um, uh, based on the six dot braille system. You, have, you know the six dot braille system which you have all over the world. Also yeah, in, in the, Holland. the normal braille yes. uh, 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 scriptures. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, I created um, the, the Tibetan braille um, with the rules of the Tibetan syllable script. Mm -hmm. So every, for every Tibetan, it's very, very easy to understand yeah. what, um, all about this, um, this script. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, and also I created it because there is, uh, in, in Tibetan you have a very difficult spelling mm -hmm. and you have to spell each word, mm -hmm. you know, like um, uh, and, uh, in a special rhythm. Oh, so yeah. I created the script mm -hmm. so that I could read according a dictate, a very fast dictate. So mm -hmm. for example, when you have like the big king, Gyebo huh? mm -hmm. you dictate like this, and you, you can, I created the mm -hmm. script so that I could write in the same speed someone dictated. Wow. So um, this, uh, now, um, we, we found out that this is very useful for the children because they can be easily uh, integrated mm -hmm. into the normal school for, mm -hmm. for the sighted. Mm -hmm. But at that time, of course, I didn't know no. about it. <laughs> mm. A Tibetan scholar found out about it and uh, he told me, well, as he knows, there is no script, no such script in Tibet. Mm. And he, he had some school projects in Tibet and mm -hmm. he went to, uh, to Tibet, took this script with him and, mm -hmm. and he uh, showed it to the education departments here. Mm -hmm. So they were quite interested in a way, but they asked him, but who can teach this? So mm. he, he said, well, she can teach it. Yeah. She, she, she can come here, you just have to invite her. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, 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 she's blind and a young woman, who should uh, who yeah. shall take care for her? So it was like that. <laughs> they didn't know you yet. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they were a little bit afraid, you yeah. know, and... Mm -hmm. um, so he was disappointed. I was very disappointed because I thought he he opens this door to this yeah. to this really difficult country, Tibet, yes. for me, you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, and then he came uh, he came uh, back and he told me that. And then I thought, well, then I have to take my own initiative, and maybe I should travel alone on my own with, uh, without a seeing guide, mm -hmm. without a, a seeing companion mm -hmm. to show the officials and mm -hmm. also to show the relatives of blind people mm -hmm. that actually blind people can do something, you know, yes. and when they can travel on their own, they yes. can also um, 
built up a project. Exactly. I thought I could persuade them like that. Mm -hmm. So and actually that worked out. Mm -hmm. So um, I I traveled to to Tibet in uh, ninety seven, mm -hmm. and um, and then I met a, a Tibetan woman and together with her we rented horses and we went. Um, to the east, um, well, it's it's east side of Lhasa. It's uh, in Jigong. It's 170 kilometers away from mm. Lhasa. Mm -hmm. So we went uh, with horses on horseback uh, for for 10 days um, uh, through the villages, and and we we met a lot of families with blind children, and mm. we talked to the families, and mm -hmm. we. We, we showed them the script and uh, we made a lot of experiences. Mm -hmm. One of the experiences was very, very um, depressing in a way mm -hmm. because there was like a little child, four years old, and, and uh, she was tied to her bed. Because, tied? Yeah, because the, the, the parents, it was not that the parents were mean or something, but mm -mm. the parents were just afraid that the little girl would bump into something while the parents were working on the fields. Oh my God. So they tied yeah. the little girl on, onto the bed and... Mm -hmm. and this infant was mm -hmm. was really, or it looked like an infant. It was a four, four years old girl, mm -hmm. but it looked really like an infant. Really, and mm -hmm. she didn't have any muscles. She couldn't walk, and mm. she couldn't even talk because they mm. didn't talk to her. Mm. So that was quite um, shocking in a way. Mm -hmm. And but also I saw other. Um, uh, I had other other experience with, which make me think that there is a lot of hope also for blind people mm -hmm. because there were some some villages. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the village of Denzin. Mm -hmm. Denzin is a little boy. We, we can. Um, uh, he's he's here right now mm -hmm. in the school also. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this boy, uh, while the other children went to school mm -hmm. and learned how to read and to write, mm -hmm. he was caring for the yaks and the goats. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he had a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. And actually, you can see this with this boy. Mm -hmm. yeah? He is very, very intelligent. Mm -hmm. and very, very enthusiastic about everything, mm -hmm. and and very caring and mm -hmm. social and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, and in a way, um, uh, I, I, at that um, point, I actually thought, wait, well, you have to, to see not only the disability, mm -hmm. actually you should more concentrate on the ability and not so much on the disability mm -hmm. of a person. So this person can orientate, uh, uh, orient, uh, orientate very yeah. well and he can... Um, yeah, and, and he has a good sense for, for, for animals. So this, right. this they found out and, mm -hmm. and they gave him this responsibility. Yes. And with those, those ideas, actually, I, um, uh, I went to the, to the um, Lhasa, I went to some departments, mm -hmm. uh, governmental departments, and I told them, I just went there with my cane into yeah. their office. So mm -hmm. I took the, the moment of shock, you know, yeah, of, of yeah. speechlessness. Yeah. And I told them all about my experiences and I told them all about my plans. And mm -hmm. um, and I asked them also, do you want something or do you have something for blind people already? Mm -hmm. And they said, no, 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 we don't have something. We planned something for two, so 2007. Mm. So that was That's quite far a time. Away. Yes. And I said, I can do something before. If it's possible, huh? and yeah. they say, okay, if you get money together, just go ahead, try out. Huh? Yeah. So with this background, actually, with the feeling that I was in a way I was welcome, mm -hmm. I went back to Germany. First of all, I met Paul. Maybe I should. Oh, tell you, you met him. Yeah. yeah, I met Paul, a Dutch uh, um, engineer. Yeah. So you and met him later, actually. No, no, we, I met him at that time in, yeah. in '97, mm -hmm. and. Um, he is a Dutch engineer, and he was traveling a lot in, uh, through Africa. And always, uh, wherever he came, mm -hmm. he worked in in um, in development projects, right. just mm -hmm. voluntarily. Mm -hmm. And he loved this this way of working. And mm -hmm. in in, um, in Holland, he had a, another job. And but uh, in in yeah, in the meantime, mm. he was traveling. Yeah. So I told him about this um, this plan I had to 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 start up a project for blind people and he was actually the only one who didn't think who didn't think that I was crazy yeah yeah and and he said well i'm interested in that so mm -hmm. if you do something if you come back please just keep me informed yeah so i went back to germany and i raised some funds also i went to the german government they gave me some funds for the startup period mm -hmm. And um, when I had all my papers together to, to travel back and also my, my working papers and everything, mm -hmm. I called him and I said, yeah, yeah, Paul, I just want to say goodbye. And he said, no, 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 I come with you. Wow, So that he, is amazing. So he quit yeah. his job mm. from one day to another. It yeah. was on Himmelfahrtstag. Yeah. And, and he quit his job. And, and um, 
uh, next week we sat together in the plane. Yeah. So first of all, he had also some jobs in in the in the um, in Red Cross. He could earn a little bit of money mm -hmm. there here in Shigatsu, oh, yeah. another mm -hmm. town in uh, next to Lhasa. But then we we yeah, and then we we worked together in this project. And mm -hmm. since then we we are here together, and <laughs> and it's, since... it's yeah, since two years. Yeah. Now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, amazing. I, I always saw that you had come with Paul, not on your own, but I think this is an amazing story that you made this on your own. Yeah, I met Paul in Tibet, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I thought you had met him before and you had come together. No, no, no. But that you had come on your own, I think you're very courage, courageous, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. I it's think not, so. It's maybe, um, in a way, I, I like the adventure, of course. Of, no? of course, yes. <laughs> um, and it's not... It's not really, a lot of people think that I'm courageous, but, you know, um, I have a little, um, in German we would say a little tick. Eh? Oh, yeah. So, for example, well, I need a lot of courage to mm -hmm. go down to the basement to get a, um, a bottle of, of, um, of mineral water. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I'm really afraid of, of some ghosts. Um, in the darkness. In the darkness. <laughs> and for this, I really need courage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for, for traveling, I, I don't know. need courage. Yeah. because. Everything can happen, you know, and exactly. it's, it's so nice yeah. when I travel on my own. I meet so many more yeah. people mm -hmm. when I travel together with Paul. Everybody's talking to the sighted boyfriend, you know. Yeah, Nobody yeah, yeah, yeah. is, and, and they ask, you. they yeah. ask him, uh, yeah. does she want sugar? My God. Um, uh, yeah. Does she like the shoes mm -hmm. she has there, mm -hmm. or does she, um, does she yeah. like Tibet? You yeah. know, yeah. I mean, and yeah. then she, uh, he asked me, and then yeah. I say, yes, she likes Tibet. So yeah. it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, this yeah. way of communication, yeah, exactly. and this is not really fun. No, no, it's not. And but this is usual. This is usual. People yes. do this, you know. Yeah. Uh, lots of people do this because yeah. it's almost like... But it's crazy, you know. It is I crazy. Have a mouth. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk. Yes, right. <laughs> Tell the world. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Great. Yeah, and, and uh, in a way, um, it's also that I meet um, uh, the, the, the right people at mm -hmm. the right time. And this mm -hmm. is really... I'm not. I, I don't. I don't know if I'm lucky or if it's just a natural selection of people I meet mm. because they are mm. mostly the more intelligent people mm -hmm. because they see right away. Okay, she's blind. Okay, um, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I ask her how how does she make made it uh, until here? Yeah. And and so uh, things like that. So yeah. I meet more the interesting people mm -hmm. than the the ignorant people. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And this that's... is this is very nice. Mm -hmm. And also f um, I get very very close contact to the to the people actually who are living here mm -hmm. because of course I speak the language and I can communicate a little mm -hmm. bit and and they they're really like um, yeah what are you doing and this is interesting and they're cu curious mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and yeah all this is, is very uh, these are very nice parts of traveling mm -hmm. on on one's own mm -hmm. and I don't need courage for that well it's very important that you speak the language of course yes you know, yes to of communicate course. with people important. and yeah yeah. And then you find your way, you yeah, know, once you speak the language, yeah. Sometimes I yeah. even I'm even faster <clears throat> than than sighted uh, tourists, mm -hmm. you know, because Well, of course, you know, we are from the sighted part, so this yeah. is the way you think, eh? You think, my god, you know, could I go around? I mean, you you also when you travel, yeah. even if you sighted, you think, oh my god, you know, I don't speak the language. We were a little bit lost when we were in Beijing, you know, yeah. trying to speak to people, making gestures, you know, telling them what we wanted. We wanted to eat this and that. And then you make the gesture appropriate to the thing you want yeah. to eat. Now, imagine you're blind, you know, I mean, it would be an extra. This is what you think when you're sighted. Yeah, but, you, you know, but of course, just, just think of, imagine yeah. you're standing on a street or you're standing in a, in a railway station with your cane, yeah. with a cane, yeah. you know? Yeah. And the people, of course, a lot of people don't know what a cane is. A lot mm -hmm. of people think that's a shepherd's stick mm -hmm. or a mm -hmm. skiing stick or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but imagine you stand there yeah. and from 100, there are one or two who know yeah. that you are blind. Yes. So they are interested. What is this blind girl doing the, there? Yeah, so they come yeah. and ask me and yeah. those are the nice people. Exactly. You know? These are the so, people so you I'm want. Lucky. I'm yeah. always lucky yeah. because it's, it's very natural selection of mm -hmm. people who are coming to me. Yeah, but I think you attract them because actually you are the clever person, if I may say so. You know, <laughs> I, I was describing you to the lot here and I said, oh, she's a really intelligent, bright girl. Amazing. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you are, you are. In my perception, you are. Yeah. And I think you're doing really good work here. It's great. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> you didn't Actually, see it yet. <laughs> no, I, I, well, your mother has been telling us, you know, I mean, 
some of the details of the building, you know, out there, which I think is interesting. The building, the new building, yeah. which they, which they, you know, which yeah. is going to be built. Yeah. And um, yeah, we have this been talking. By, this is by the uh, Dutch embassy. It's yeah, yes, yeah. she Dutch told embassy. us. She told yeah. us. Yeah, maybe you can tell something about that. You know, just yeah. for. Now, right now we have a preparatory school. That means that the children don't stay for their whole school life here, uh -huh. but um, they will uh, be here for one or two years, and they will learn the Tibetan, Chinese, and English braille system, mm -hmm. and they will also learn Chinese and English mm -hmm. and mathematics, and mm -hmm. and so that they are prepared for mm -hmm. actually the schools for the sighted in their own villages. Yeah. And also they learn how to walk with a cane and yeah. how to be a little bit independent. So mm -hmm. how to make their own butter tea and mm -hmm. and put on their shoes and brush their teeth and things wow. like that. Yeah? Right. So yeah. everything which, which they need, which make them independent, mm -hmm. they will learn here. Mm -hmm. And then we send them back into villages, mm -hmm. into their own villages. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, with the help of field workers, they mm -hmm. we try to integrate them in, mm -hmm. into the schools. Mm -hmm. Normal schools into the normal schools, mm -hmm. yeah. And the next project, what we want to to parallel to this uh, preparatory school, mm -hmm. is um, um, uh, vocational training for adults or for young adults mm -hmm. who became blind at a later age or mm -hmm. who were blind from birth. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, so the first step is actually, um, or became, uh, or the first uh, thought of what kind of profession we can uh, we can make for blind people mm -hmm. we can make suitable for blind people mm -hmm. came out of the um, of the side from the from the tibetans themselves so there were right. some doctors from the countryside and they had a request because there is a law in china that um, the medical massage and physiotherapy is mm -hmm. reserved for blind and deaf people mm -hmm. and um, in in tibet especially in the countryside there are a lot of people who have big bone disease mm -hmm. this is a, um, a disease where, um, where the people get crippled and and mm -hmm. they have big joints and very weak muscles mm -hmm. and um, and also they have a lot of patients who have arthritis and mm -hmm. back pain and things like that mm -hmm. so um, in a way pills and injections cannot really help a lot. No. So what they need is people who know about medical massage and physiotherapy mm -hmm. who can treat those people. Yeah, yeah. And they asked us, why don't we concentrate on this? Right. And this is really nice that actually the, the doctors themselves or the Tibetans themselves are requesting this. Requesting yeah. this. Yeah. So for this we, we also have a very, yeah, we, mm. we, we are quite certain that we can have good jobs for blind people in this area. Exactly. So yeah. um, we talked with the uh, Dutch embassy about it and mm -hmm. they were quite, um, yeah, they <laughs> were, were quite into, uh, into, uh, enthusiastic about yeah. it. Yeah. And they actually, they they supported us from the very, very beginning when mm -hmm. we had nothing here, you mm -hmm. know, they, they gave us a braille printer and a computer and mm -hmm. because they saw our motivation and they exactly. saw that we had enthusiasm and they said we yeah. want to we want to support this huh? exactly so now yeah. they see that it's going on and on and mm -hmm. and um, and now they sponsor this um, uh, this building it's a building which is um, built in traditional Tibetan style mm -hmm. um, not just because we are just nostalgic, you no, know, no, no, no. but because it's much, much uh, better yeah. um, adaptable to the climate. Mm -hmm. So wh uh, what um, what we have there is like a building, or what we will have is a building out of stone and madrig, mm -hmm. and um, with uh, wooden pillars. Mm -hmm. You can see later the wooden yeah, pillars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, and and uh, and this will be built by an organization. It's uh, called uh, TH THF. Mm -hmm. It's a Tibetan Heritage Fund. It's an organization which is run by a German and a Portuguese. Yeah. And uh, they restore old houses in Lhasa. Mm -hmm. And um, for them, it's the first new built building, but mm -hmm. in old Tibetan traditional style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and this is a quite nice style, of course, on one hand. And on the other hand, it's uh, very suitable for this climate because in the winter, it's warm in the inside. You can heat it up very easily because yeah. mm -hmm. the mud brick is very much <coughs> isolated. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the summer, it's, it's cold it's in cool. the inside and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's really nice. So, but of course, in the inside, we do more, like a little bit more modern materials. So that we yeah. have like wooden floors, mm -hmm. which are easily to clean and yeah, warm yeah. And, yeah. and nice, for example, in the massage center when they go barefoot or mm -hmm. barefooted yeah. so they, they really can can, can walk, walk. Um, through the the floor yeah. and with this we also have some training and classrooms mm -hmm. 
And to this building, which will be um, uh, to this building, there will be another dormitory also, oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. also in Tibetan style mm -hmm. for boys and girls. But this will be um, donated by by pri private donors from Germany. Oh yeah, right. Hmm. Yeah. Gosh, this 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 sounds like a really healthy. Um, uh, how do you call this? Um, um, how do you call this? It's it's like a, a healthy. It's not business. I I wouldn't say business. I I can't come to the word now. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, it sounds like it's going to work. Yeah. I you hope. know, you've I got the house. Much. You've got everything you need. Yeah. The children are here. They're learning. I think you've got it pretty together. Yeah, I I hope it's it's going together. Yes, but I think what we have is also together. a trainer. He's blind himself. Yes. And he was trained as a massage trainer for trainers, uh, mm -hmm. as a massage teacher for trainers, actually, yeah. um, uh, in Chengdu. And, mm -hmm. and he will be also a role model. No? And this is yeah, also yeah. one very, very important Same. aspect yeah. of this yeah. whole um, project. Because mm -hmm. we would like to employ more and more blind people who are really taking over this, yeah. this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, maybe together, hand in hand with sighted, some sighted people. Mm -hmm. But more and more blind people should really mm -hmm. run the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think you are the biggest role model, you know. I mean, getting the whole thing together and, you know, yeah, well, but running the, it. And, but I think it's a good but idea. But I, I want, to, be, I, I want to, to go after a few years. Yeah, no, you I want, don't want to yeah, stay here no, for, no, no. forever. I want no. to, to, to be... Um, in some other places in, in, yeah, in yeah. three or four years. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. This is a, you, you, you're putting it up in a healthy way, right? <laughs> so the people who are uh, working with you now, they will learn how to do it and they can continue this business. They can continue the school without mm -hmm. you later. I hope. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Hope very much. Mm -hmm. So the, the other project is what, what we try to build up is a farm. Mm -hmm. um, uh, outside of Lhasa, we will uh, receive land from the government for that. Mm -hmm. So we will have some, just a few animals and some yaks, some geese, some goats, some um, some horses. Mm -hmm. So and we would like to train um, nomads and farmers who are living in this very remote and high altitude areas. Mm -hmm. um, this group of people is uh, mostly in danger of becoming blind. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. they, of course, they had their job before and um, and now when they became blind they don't know what to do anymore. They feel useless mm -hmm. in their society. Can you say something about why they uh, are in danger to get blind? Yeah, um, the, the most um, are the, the the biggest cause of blindness is actually the very, very high UV light radiation mm -hmm. and uh, also dust and wind. Yeah, yeah. And of course, um, when you are in very remote areas, then, then you have long, long ways to the next um, ophthalmologist. So mm -hmm. if you have an infection mm -hmm. and um, nobody can cure it right away, then then it could be, then the people Fatal, are yeah. much more in danger of getting mm -hmm. blind and staying blind. Mm -hmm. So they, there are a lot of cataract operations. Mm -hmm. But of course, not everything can be cured. No. And also, um, another cause is also soot in the houses caused by yak dung. Oh, right. So they burn the yak dung, and because of the high altitude, um, uh, the yak dung cannot burn properly. Mm -hmm. And the soot is, is uh, laying down on the cornea, and then mm -hmm. the cornea gets infected, and maybe they ripe their oh, eyes yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and everything. Uh -huh. So these are the most causes. Yeah, yeah. And um, there are not too many children, well, normal average uh, on children. Well, there are some children who became blind because of measles or oh, uh, yeah. lack of vitamin A. Mm -hmm. This this could be preventable, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But most of the blind people are between 20 and and, um, and 40, at least the, the, the ones who can still learn something and who can still uh, learn their profession. Mm -hmm. And what we would want to do is we would like to train those nomads and, and farmers who know their job mm -hmm. in their old job so that mm -hmm. they become reintegrated in their old job. Right. So that they learn how to orientate in the mountains while herding the yaks. Mm -hmm. Or they learn how to to um, yeah maybe um, how to raise horses so yes. because they yeah. 
were doing it before. So mm -hmm. why why shouldn't they go on just with new techniques and right. new methods? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is um, this is one thing. Another thing is like cheese production. A blind person can can probably um, make cheese product. Exactly. Uh, can can yeah. probably make cheese because mm -hmm. there, especially a person who doesn't orientate well very mm -hmm. well, but he just needs a room, a clean room, you know, mm -hmm. and and some pots and. Mm -hmm. And some some equipments to mm -hmm. to make cheese. Right. So mm -hmm. these are um, all kinds of things. We we try to look what what did the people before they became blind, mm -hmm. and what are the abilities, mm -hmm. and then we find out of the profession what all they right. can do for yeah. the future. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So actually, the the biggest goal is to for uh, at least for the sighted world mm -hmm. to to have another or a new attitude towards blindness. Yes. Um, so that they see you you don't have to be ashamed of blindness you mm -hmm. don't have to be ashamed of a blind relative mm -hmm. but uh, um, blindness is maybe another way of living it's mm -hmm. not a punishment what no. a lot of people think here mm -hmm. but it's maybe just another way of living and another way of looking at things right or touching at things mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. yeah? so mm -hmm. and, and this is one goal and the other yeah. goal is really to give the blind people who come here to this rehabilitation center mm -hmm. give a very very intensive training and mm -hmm. and give a very um um yeah impact of of confident mm -hmm. you know they, mm -hmm. they should be proud they should be they should not hide away they should no. should know about their own abilities exactly so what 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 was very very nice was that there were some of our students they were walking through the the city and there is a very bad word in tibetan for for blind person it's like mm -hmm. blind fool yeah? oh yeah uh -huh. and um and this nomad was was cursing around like oh the blind fool so they were turning around and they were asking him, can't you read or write? Did yeah. you go to school? Can you find your way uh, to the toilet without a torch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 and this yeah. is great. Uh, yeah. this, is, this is really how it should be. Yeah, they're getting more conscious yeah. and more self-confident. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and they stopped. They stopped cursing around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is, this is so important. Yeah. And this is the most important thing. This is much more important than just... Um, uh, just um, feeding the children with knowledge. Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. Confident is the most important mm -hmm. thing because mm -hmm. they are the ambassadors um, for for the blind. Actually, mm -hmm. in their own areas, in, in their own villages, they mm -hmm. go to the villages. Mm -hmm. They go to their own parents and say, "Hey, look, you don't have to be ashamed. You don't yes. have to lock me away. I no. can sing. I can dance. I, yes. I'm happy. Yeah. I can even read and write. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that the world is round and, yeah. and yeah, not yeah, 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 not right. flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so this is a real pioneer you know I mean you're helping the children but you're also working on the consciousness of the people around yes yes you know yeah. a change in the behavior towards yeah. the blind actually yeah. this was be, would be also necessary in Europe yeah I think so too <laughs> yeah I think in Holland you know we hear a lot about it you know people yeah, try to integrate Holland, in Holland the people yeah. are more open because there is, um, there's more awareness of, yeah. of visually impairedness and, and blindness lately you they talk a lot about uh, integration yes even of uh, people with the syndrome of down you know yes, yeah. going to normal yeah, schools and this is really and, good but in germany yeah. they are not as far mm -hmm. so in germany a lot of people still think oh he's blind he cannot do anything. yeah 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 uh -huh. so this is this is a problem yeah. uh, i think and and mm -hmm. um yeah maybe it helps also maybe this project also helps for for yeah for countries in, in exactly Europe, yeah. yeah yeah so sabria you you wrote a couple of books can you tell us about them yeah one one book is uh, about the startup period of this project mm -hmm. and also how I travel and, and all about this funny um, situations I, um, I experience mm -hmm. and, um, and also about the startup period so all the difficulties because it was not every everything was not great you know uh -huh. and the, the, we had a lot of hells where we went through mm -hmm. um, uh, so and, and especially also about the backgrounds of the children mm -hmm. and how the children are here in the school and mm -hmm. and acting and so um, it's actually the the um, the period between ninety seven and yeah, two thousand spring two thousand mm -hmm. so this is um, this is one book um, which is from Keep Moy and Witch. so and this is about German, the last three years yes mm -hmm. yeah in German it's called uh, Mein Weg führt nach Tibet mm -hmm. die blinden Kinder von Larsen. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe it comes out in Dutch also. <laughs> I hope so. It yeah. would be nice. <laughs> and um, the other book is a children book. Um, it's called uh, Tashi's Neue Welt, Tashi's New World. And um, 
uh, it's about a little blind boy who's brought up in uh, or who becomes blind um, at the age of six or seven mm -hmm. through an illness but the the parents or the grandmother especially she thinks that it is a demon mm -hmm. and this happens very often to those mm -hmm. uh, children mm -hmm. actually this Tashi figure is of course a fiction no? and it's yeah. a fantasy figure but um, he's, uh, he's um, a combination of all the background situation um, from our children. Yeah, yeah. So in this Tashi there is one little girl which is not yet at our school. She is three years old but mm -hmm. she will be hopefully later because she's mm -hmm. really cute and very yeah. intelligent. Um, this girl um, actually um, is a very very bright and very fast little girl mm -hmm. and but she's totally blind mm -hmm. and the parents don't believe really or the grandmother especially don't believe that she is blind and she thinks that she is possessed by a demon. And therefore, mm -hmm. she doesn't want to touch her, you know. Wow. And and um, and she thinks that the demon is actually helping her. So yeah. this this Tashi is um, uh, in uh, yeah the um, the the figure of Tashi or the the Tashi who's in in this book the mm -hmm. the main figure. He's um, he also has this demon, no? but mm -hmm. he sees this demon as a friend. A demon is not always bad. No, there are good and bad demons. So he mm -hmm. he says uh, he. Um, despite the fact that he thinks that the demon stole his eyes mm -hmm. he still thinks that he's actually his friend or he should be his friend mm -hmm. because he can he can show him how to use the other senses and how to use the the um, yeah like the the tactile sense or the right. oil sense mm -hmm. and um, uh, for me it was very very important to show um, that how um, unsentimental children and how practical actually children um, can handle this mm -hmm. this, um, this blindness, mm -hmm. the, the situation of becoming blind. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think, oh, now the, the, the end of the world came. Yeah, but yeah. I think for the children, it's oh. really, um, they, they, um, they are so, a lot of the children, they are very, very positive. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we have one little boy, and of course, he's also a part of this character, Tashi. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Gensen. Mm -hmm. And Gensen became blind at the age of nine, mm -hmm. and he's now 11. Mm -hmm. And uh, when when he became blind, or we, sometimes we ask him about this time when he became blind. Mm -hmm. So he said the time when he had um, a pain in the eyes mm -hmm. that was that was bad. But mm -hmm. afterward, afterwards it was good again. Yeah, so yeah. actually, a sighted person might think, but afterwards you were blind, and that yeah. must be hell. Yeah. So, but he is very very mm. very positive about it. Exactly. And then he says, um, when when he goes on in talking, he says he remembers one um, situation, you know, where mm -hmm. where he um, it was two two weeks maybe after he became blind. Mm -hmm. So he sat on the back of a truck, and uh, with a lot of other people, and the truck was going right along a, a ravine, mm -hmm. and it was shaking very much, and mm -hmm. all the people were afraid because they they thought maybe the truck will fall will, will fall down. Mm -hmm. And and um, Gensen was very very um, like laughing and happy and had a great mm. fun because he didn't see the danger and he no. said that was my advantage. Yeah 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 yeah. So in a way, this is also a character <laughs> yeah. of this this dashi. Uh -huh. Another character is is Chile. Chile is actually a storyteller. She uh, he is he he. Um, in a way, he's also really lazy bum because he sat all his life on a little stone mm -hmm. in the village or on on a on a lawn, yeah. and and was telling stories to the animals and mm -hmm. to the children of the village. Mm -hmm. And he he tells beautiful stories and he's very fantasyful, um, but he didn't do anything else. Huh? So uh -uh. <laughs> and and then there is Denzin, Denzin, um, the the little boy um, uh, whom I talked about. Um, uh, who had the responsibility for, for yaks and goats. And all those characters are together combined in this one character of Dashi. Mm -hmm. So this Dashi um, becomes blind and he realizes that the world is not just dark, like mm. the, the people around him suspect. Exactly, you know? yeah. But, but he realizes that, um, that the world can be very, very colorful, mm -hmm. maybe even more colorful, because mm -hmm. he can paint his pictures in his own brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. And, um, yeah, and this, this trashy um, is sitting on, on a lawn one day and, and herding the, the goats, and, and then a person comes along and with horses. Right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's me, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and shows him the Braille script. So there's uh -huh. a dream which 
suddenly opens, you know, yeah, yeah. or a world, a whole world, a whole which world some, opening up. Yes, mm -hmm. and then this Drashi um, uh, is going to go out of, after a few years. He yeah. finds nomads, a caravan, mm -hmm. and this is also from a, another boy who comes from the Everest region. He was brought by a nomad. Here. Oh yeah. So he finds um, uh, nomads who bring him to Lhasa, and mm -hmm. he finds the school. Mm -hmm. So this is actually. Um, a, a little story which is a combination of all the kids here, oh, right. not all the kids, but no, no, a no, lot no, of kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and and also experience, of course, a lot of experience I have because mm -hmm. I have the experience that um, <laughs> that my world is not just dark, no. like everybody would would expect. Mm -hmm. But but mm -hmm. I um, I always imagine, like when you're sitting there, I always re imagine you, you know. Oh,